Good evening, everyone. How are we doing tonight? It's Timothy Miller here, the Raider Opus Coordinator of North America. And it is an extreme pleasure that we are hosting our very first live Raider Opus training webinar with Dr. Matthew Zorn. And I know for many of us, it has been a long time in the making, and it has been something that we have been very eager to get here in North America is really good radar opus training, something that's accessible, available, ideally for free after having invested, you know, such a substantial amount in having homeopathic software. And tonight is the first of hopefully many initiatives in that direction of getting really good accessible training uh, to in your hands so that you can be out there practicing the best homeopathy possible using radar opus as that tool. So, uh, in order to get started, I'm going to be shortly passing over everything to Dr. Zorn, but I would like to give him a proper introduction. And Dr. Zorn is a licensed naturopathic physician in the beautiful state of Oregon. He received his bachelor's degree in science from the State University of New York in Purchase in 1998. He then went to receive his doctorate of naturopathic medicine from the accredited naturopathic medical program of NUNM in 2002. And he's a perpetual student of medicine, healing, life, and human nature. And he strives to continue to broaden his understanding of homeopathy as well as wellness. He's been using homeopathic medicine in a clinical setting for the last 16 years, treating a multitude of acute and chronic illnesses. And it's awesome because we're gonna have all that expertise on our side as we're learning to use not only the program, but also get skilled in homeopathy. He started teaching homeopathy as an adjunct professor as well as supervising a clinical shift at NUNM in 2014. And uh, for those of you who might know, NUNM in Portland, Oregon has been changing and revamping the curriculum and Dr. Zorn has been a major asset as part of that change and making sure that homeopathy is being honored in that program. So kudos to you, Dr. Zorn, that's amazing. And also he um, plays a really big role with the homeopathy club there and Anna I saw that you're you're online right now Anna and Dr. Zorn thank you for all the work that you're doing at NUNM with the homeopathy club it's amazing and um, beyond his clinical training he's also taught a meditation yogic philosophy and wellness for many years and has maintained a personal practice of meditation for over 20 years so we can't really think of a better candidate for for offering this training so without further ado I would like to pass over the reins to Dr. Zorn and um, allow him to, to commence our training tonight. And before I do that, just a couple of uh, public service announcements. One being, since this is our very first training, we're providing this training to be very basic. We're gonna just start with some foundational things in Raider Opus, how to use the very elementary features. Um, Dr. Zorn's gonna go over a couple of simple cases to kind of highlight using some of those features. And um, we are planning to do more webinars that are going to have additional features, advanced features, et cetera. So if you're finding that this webinar is too basic for you, not to worry, we're gonna have something that will float your boat. And um, if this is par for the course and it's right where your skill set is, don't worry, we're gonna have more of these basic trainings also. Another housekeeping item is I'm gonna be monitoring. Uh, if, you, if you scroll your cursor, cursor, you'll see that there's a Q and A section or a chat section and you can enter any questions that you have in there. Um, and, and in the chat section, you can change to whom you're sending that message. Send it to me, send it to Timothy Miller, to the host. And what I'll be doing is throughout the webinar, I'll be checking to see if there are any questions and I will pass along those questions to Dr. Zorn if there's a good moment for it. And please know we've got a lot of people on the call. We've got uh, 99 at the moment. So we probably won't get through all the questions, but we'll try to get through as many as we possibly can, including having some time at the very end where, where we're gonna open the floor for questions. So thank you guys so much for being a part of this very exciting time, this class. And um, Dr. Zorn, thank you so much. And, and uh, hats off to you. Thank you, thank you. Um, so hopefully everybody can hear me. Um, I connected with uh, Dr. Miller uh, and agreed to do this. Um, Mainly, I'm not an official representative of uh, Archibel or this program, but um, this is a, a tool that I've learned to use over the years, and um, it's it's a fundamental uh, tool for for homeopathy, and it can really speed up uh, your case analysis and getting to the correct remedy. Um, <clears throat> 
the two basic pillars of homeopathy being um, case taking and then case analysis or repertorization. You know, the materia medica is, uh, you need to spend time on it, but the, the remedies you get to know over time and when you see them in patients, then you really develop a, a, a deep understanding of each remedy. So I would just say to those of you, anybody in, out there that are beginners, uh, continue to focus on um, your case taking skills and also the repertorial skills. So uh, I'm going to start from very, very basic uh, overview of the, uh, the program itself, okay? So you have, depending on which model you have, module of, of radar, you've got your repertory. So if I click on repertory, this window here is where you're going to find your repertories, okay? This window on this side, on the other side of this divider right here, this is where you have all of your activity. This is where anytime you open up a tab, it's gonna open up over here on this side, okay? So as an example, right now, Synthesis uh, Treasure Edition 2009 is open, okay? You have multiple versions of that. I don't know if you guys see, anytime you see a little triangle, you might wanna press on it and it usually opens up a, um, a little drop down menu. So I click on that and currently I have Boninghausen's repertory open, uh, DeGroote's a repertory on dreams, uh, Murphy's repertory, sensations as if, uh, the synop synoptic key by Boger. Okay, and I can close all of those or I can select a different repertory. Okay, so right now I'm on synthesis. Here it says full repertory some more uh, arrows, triangles. You click on that, you've got, I, I like full repertory. I don't particularly like these smaller ones. Uh, Kent's repertory is a great repertory, but it's extremely incomplete. Um, and as you all know, hopefully, um, <clears throat> a repertory is a, is a work in pro uh, progress. The Materia Medica is a work in progress. So I like the full repertory. So just know that um, if um, you, if something happened where you, clicked on Millennium or Quantum, you're going to have a lot fewer remedies and a lot fewer rubrics. All right. So we always want it to be, I personally want it to be up on a full repertory. Um, if I, so that's where you pick out your repertories. If you know the author of the repertory, he says search for repertories. You can just click right in there. And then let's just say, you know, I want to look at uh, Fatak. And then there's Fatak. I click on that. <clears throat> and here is concise repertory by Fatak. As you see, it opened up the tab. Uh, over here, which is where you're going to do everything um, when you're working on a case. Okay, so just backspace. References are going to be here. This is all your Materia Medica. It's not just Materia Medica. There are therapeutic uh, articles in here, therapeutic books. There are provings. There are clinical cases, and those are all in here. All right. Uh, patients. I'm not going to click on that one, um, but that's where you'd have all your patient files. Remedies. When I'm searching for a remedy, I don't usually use this tab here, uh, but you can. Let's just say, for instance, I type in LA, I type in LACH, and there's your lachesis. You click on that, and then what's going to open up on this side is lachesis muta. This is um, an Archibald. Whenever you see this, where you see mind, and then you have a, uh, an overview of the mind, there is um, over on the references. I type in. Uh, Archibald, you see here, Archibald Keynotes for Radar. You click on that. <clears throat> and this is going to give you the overview for several hundred remedies. It gives you mind symptoms, generals, food, and it kind of runs through and it gives you keynotes. Okay, so this is a, a good one if you kind of want to just a gestalt understanding of the remedy, like a, a, a deep, uh, a true reflection of the remedy, but it's not. Uh, approving where you have, you know, hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of entries. Okay. So don't forget about searching for uh, Archibald keynotes, or you can have that open and <clears throat> access that. One other thing I want you guys to be aware of, uh, anytime you see binoculars, when you see binoculars, it's usually going to mean that uh, it's going to take you to Materia Medica. It's going to give you a list of remedies. So I click on the binoculars. And it's gonna give you remedies in um, alphabetical order, all right? So let's just say I wanted to go to Allium Sepa, Red Onion, and click on that and press go to. Okay, give me a second, Allium Sepa and go to. And then it takes you to Allium and it gives you an overview, all right? You guys are gonna to have to decide 
uh, which materials you like. Okay, me personally, um, I like Vermeulen. I like this Keynotes uh, by Radar. Um, I like Boger, Synoptic Key. Um, I like uh, Fatax Materia Medica. Um, so those are some of the ones that I refer to and use. Um, uh, there are other provide uh, practitioners that like other um, other materia medicas, but those are some of the ones I like. Um, Boninghausen, uh, Borakis Pocket Manual is a really good one. Okay, so just to give you guys some some ideas as to uh, materia medica you'd like to look into further. Uh, let's see, families. I don't really use this tab much at all. Um, again, I'm not an official rep. I've not been a, uh, officially trained in how to use this program. I've just been using it and kind of figured out how I'd like to use it. Um, and so that's kind of what I'm going to uh, hopefully pass on to you guys. I think probably the most, one of the things that makes this uh, a computer program that you can use for repertorizing is the speed with which you can find uh, rubrics and information. That's really the thing that, 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 that sets this apart from uh, thumbing through books, okay? So one of the first things I want you guys to think about when you are maneuvering, okay, you can click on icons, but one of the best ways to get through uh, the, the uh, repertory is to start typing in, okay? So right now, uh, I have synthesis tab open, I've got this, this is where anything you have open is going to be a tab up here, okay? And you can close it at any time. So um, it, with synthesis, you hopefully you guys know that it's a bunch of chapters, essentially. So if I click on the binoculars, you're going to have all the chapters, your mind chapter with all of the symptoms, the hand gestures, uh, vertigo, head, eyes, vision. Make sure you understand that uh, the eye chapter has to do with what's going on with the eye, the physiology of the eye, the anatomy of the eye you know, whether there's inflammation. Vision has to do with what the patient is perceiving. The same thing with the ear. It's the anatomy of the ear, the physiology of the ear versus actually hearing. Even though under ear, there is noises in the ear with different types of noises. Uh, under nose, they put nose and smell together. Okay. Um, so essentially, there are probably several hundred thousand rubrics in all of these chapters. Let me do the math on this real quick. What's that? 10 times four. So there's 41 chapters. Okay. It's almost impossible to want to click on that. Let's say click on mine. And then I'm just going to start scrolling down. This is, this is the way you, this is what you don't need to do. Okay. I'm going to show you guys a much easier way. So let's say I have a patient and they say, um, right before my menses, I get this strong burst of energy and I just start cleaning the house. Um, I start getting a lot of work done. I just have this huge amount of energy and it happens right before my menses. Okay. What I'm going to start doing, watch, I'm not going to move my mouse. I'm just going to type in mind. Then I press enter and then that selects the mind chapter. And the word for being very busy or wanting to do a lot of work is industrious. Industrious, which is mania for work. Okay. So I can press enter and then you see menses before. I'll click on that. And then that takes me to this rubric here. So this means that the person, uh, maybe they're typically uh, indifferent or apathetic, or they just uh, indolent in some way. But right before their menses, man, they just are, are, they go into almost a state of mania. Where they're doing quite a bit of work. That would be the rubric. Okay. If you have a patient that says, <clears throat> um, I cannot go out into the sunlight for very long or else I get a headache. So we should know then that part of this is familiarizing yourself with uh, the different chapters. Okay. Uh, and understanding that the repertory breaks the body down into different, uh, into different sections. So for that particular symptom, you're just going to go to head, right? Cause that's where the headaches happen. And for headache, you're never going to find, you're very rarely going to find headache. It's usually head pain. Okay. Uh, unless it's a concomitant. When somebody gets nauseous with their headache or they're vomiting with their headache, it'll have the word headache. Okay. So head, enter, pain, enter, sun, enter, exposure to the sun from, enter. And I press enter again. 
and that's your rubric for somebody who, if they go out into this and they expose themselves to the sunlight, uh, uh, they will get a headache. All right. <clears throat> so this notion of just typing in the different chapters. Okay. Um, there is a rubric for uh, if somebody, they drink a third of a glass of water and then they urinate uh, a couple hundred mLs where the amount of urine that they're urinating doesn't equal the amount that they're taking into their body. The rubric is urine, copious. Um, where's the rubric? Drunk, more than is drunk, okay? So that would be a rubric for somebody who has small quantities of uh, liquid, water, and but they urinate much, much more than, uh, than how much they're taking in, all right? So those are just some examples. Um, of how to type in the chapter that you want, okay? Um, if somebody is coughing up a green expectoration as part of their uh, symptom picture, you go to EX, there's expectoration, press enter, and then the different types of the different qualities of expectoration, the odor, the color, the consistency are all gonna be under that, okay? If I wanna go back, I can just press backspace and then I'm back to all my chapters, okay? Somebody says, um, when uh, I, I go to sleep, um, I can't sleep um, because uh, my headaches wake me up. So you're just going to, if we have our chapters in front of us, we go to sleep. Uh, you can type in disturbed. And there's heat, which is fever. It can also be, sometimes you have to check different words. Sleeplessness from headache and you click on that and there are your remedies that have sleeplessness from headache. Okay. So the ability to just type in what you want um, is something you need to develop. Uh, it's a much better way than just kind of scrolling down through with your mouse or with your pad. So it's not a very efficient way of uh, using the program. All right, let's go across some more. Um, there's a go backward, go forward. I don't use this very much, but if I want to go backwards, I click on that and it takes me back to the last rubric uh, or I can go forward. Um, I hardly ever use the history. This is actually a history of what you're searching for and the different materia medica that you've accessed. <clears throat> Analysis is going to open up a clipboard. Okay, so I, uh, down here I had five uh, rubrics in this clipboard and here are your clipboards over here. Okay, the clipboards are where you drag or put your, your rubrics into. So let's just say I want to use this rubric. I can either grab it with my mouse and pull it, which is typically what I do, or there's this little function here where I can change the intensity of the symptom, or if I just click on it, it's going to go into this top clipboard. Okay, um, I'm not sure if there's a way to do that and put it into a specific clipboard. Uh, it seems like it only goes into this top clipboard. All right, so that's another way of putting uh, a rubric that you've selected into a clipboard. So let's just go to another one where uh, the patient, um, when they get warm, they get aggravated. So they, they, they're heat, they're, they develop heat in the body, warmth, uh, it aggravates their symptoms. So it's under general, so just type in G-E-N, takes me to the generals chapter, enter. And then from there, I type in warm, Becoming warm, I click on that, aggravates. And I can actually grab the rubric from here as well. See, it says AG, AGG with 90 remedies in it. And I drop that in there. And now I have two uh, rubrics in my clipboard. Okay. Let's also say that the patient, um, you do a physical, and you notice that uh, their tongue has imprints of the teeth in the tongue. Okay. So we should all know that that would be under mouth. Press enter. Indented. And there's tongue, enter, enter. And now you have, that's the rubric. So you can grab it and pull it in and put that in there. And those, these are, so this is how you're building up your clipboard. Okay. And notice I'm just, I'm just grabbing and pulling this back and forth. If I'm over here, I can't really read the rubrics. I need a little more space to see the rubric. So I grab with my, I'm using a Mac, by the way, I'm not using a PC. Um, and Matt, could I chime in for just one second? Absolutely. Uh, we had a question when you were on the clipboards from Gail okay. Eastwood, and um, it seems to be a question that's come up from the survey feedback, and also Gail was mentioning now 
How okay. do we add and remove clipboards? Could you show us how to do that? Absolutely, okay. Um, so I go to the clipboard and if you have a PC, you're gonna right click. If you have a Mac, you uh, go to control click. So control click and it opens up this window here and you see down at the bottom it says more clipboards or fewer clipboards. So if I wanna add another one, I just click on that and there's another clipboard. So again, it's control click. You go down to more clipboards and it adds another clipboard. And the one thing that I'll just chime in here is the quantity of clipboards does depend on your package. So if you are doing that and you're noticing that you can't get any more clipboards, it may be a limit based on the package that you own. And it's something that we can upgrade for sure. Um, and the, the total number of maximum clipboards is 12 with that highest feature of clipboards, just so mm. you know. Okay, thank you. Um, well, and one other thing, it, it, right now, uh, if I save this, it's gonna go to one patient. So I don't need to, like, practically, I should have one, maybe two clipboards that I use for one patient, okay? Um, I used to, way back when I graduated and uh, a little bit after, I would create different clipboards for different, quote unquote, cycles of the case or segments of the case. And it, it just didn't really turn out well for me. Uh, I had really poor results. So now, typically, I probably use uh, one clipboard per patient. Um, if they come in with an acute, I might add that into a second clipboard as a completely separate uh, uh, remedy for an acute. And then just one other thing is... Uh, how you were uh, changing the width of the analysis window. Can you show us how to do that again by making it smaller and larger? The, so this right here where I'm, I'm, I'm bringing my mouse over and you see how it changes. And then I just grab it with uh, my mouse. I'm, just, oh, I'm clicking down and then I can just pull it with my pad to the, to the left or right. Is that what they were talking about? Yeah, I think so. So in that, so that, see how the cursor has changed yeah. Oh, how did he make, I meant, how did you make, oh, how did you make the references on the left-hand pane go away? The references, oh, 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 double click up here. So you go, you double click the tab. There you go. Good, a great question. See, these are some of the things that I do, uh, second nature, I don't even think about anymore. So these are the kinds of questions that I'm hoping to help you guys with. Um, so please, I really appreciate the question. So if so I want... So okay. yeah, so if I want to open up, if I want to just, I don't really care what's going on over on the left-hand side with the references, like I just double click on the tab and it opens the whole thing up. And if I want to minimize it and go back to uh, that left-sided window, I double click on the tab and then it closes it down again and gives me the access to the repertory or the references. Um, so I want to do synthesis. I can, if I click once, it goes to the tab. And if I click twice, it opens up over the whole, whole window. Like that. Thank you. Okay. Yeah, you're welcome. Um, continuing across the top. Uh, so this is interesting. This is the maps. Yeah, we'll, we'll talk about this a little bit. This icon up here is also right here. Okay, so you guys can see there's this icon is exactly the same as that one. I typically access it over here. Okay, so you click on the, the triangle and it says select a map. And uh, I'll just show you a couple, I don't use all of these, but a couple of ones that I do use, uh, I like to go to Farouk Master, Lax and Homeopathy. So if you're considering that the patient might need uh, a milk remedy, uh, and in the Materia Medica, there are other uh, um, uh, Lax uh, books in Materia Medica, but this is kind of like a, a succinct um, little page. So I click on that, and then it says Lax and Homeopathy, and you've got Lax Humanum, and it gives you your themes, Okay, Lachyquinum, which is horse's milk, Lactelfinium, which is dolphin, then it gives you delusions, and, uh, and this is all from Dr. Farouk Master, who uh, hopefully most of you know is probably one of the best uh, homeopaths in the world. Uh, and so the, that's something you can access if you want to look up the different milks. We have Lacleo, Lacaninum, um, Lacvaccinium defloratum, which is skim milk, uh, and Lactlupinum, which is wolf. Okay, so the way you do that is um, again, you go to this little, it's a globe with looks like a little phone or remote control. And that icon is also up here and you can access the same thing. You click on that, select a map and go to Farouk Master. Okay. Also Roger Morrison's carbons are in there. I don't use that one very much. The other one I wanna to talk to you guys about is this one, Sankaran. 
It's Sankran Schema. So I, I want to um, uh, just give you a bit of a caution here. So let's go to it and let's go to miasms. And I don't know how many of you are using all 10 miasms, but it's something that I use. It's something that I strongly advocate. Uh, Roger Morrison and Nancy Herrick uh, in the last, uh, I think about two years ago, came out with a wonderful book called The Ten Miasms of the New Millennium. Uh, if you want to understand miasms, um, the, uh, that would be the book to have, to really get a succinct understanding so that you can apply um, the um, uh, understanding of the miasm to the case. With that said, you better be really, really sure that the patient needs, that you understand the malarial miasm, let's say, or the syphilitic miasm, and it's just ironclad that that is the miasm for the case. Otherwise, you're probably gonna miss the remedy. You know, if you see an indication for the tubercular miasm, but they actually need the cancer, a remedy from the cancer miasm because there is some overlap, or um, you see the anger of the syphilitic miasm, um, the cancer miasm can be angry, tubercular miasm remedies can be angry, so you really have to be sure if you're going to apply this, okay? So what this does, if, if I press syphilitic, this is, and this is a little quirky thing with the program. I'm not sure why it does it, but do you notice over here where I have three rubrics here? I have five rubrics here. There's a little five and six rubrics in that clipboard. When I apply, let's, I'm going to do the syphilitic. I apply that. It applies that, uh, see here, Sankaran syphilitic. It applies it to all of the clipboards that have rubrics in it. We don't want that. We just wanted it applied to this clipboard. So when I click on it individually, it gets rid of, the application of the syphilitic miasm to the other clipboards, okay? So that's just one of those little quirky things about it. I don't know why it does it, but I, I figured that out on my own, that, that you, that's what you have to do. So now we have 69 remedies, and that's, this is another uh, problem with applying a miasm. There are many, many, many more remedies that are in the syphilitic miasm than 69. Okay. This is, again, it's, it's, an, it's a reflection of the repertory and the materia medica as a work in progress. So I don't use it very much, um, but and that's uh, something you can use. Okay. If I want to get rid of this, so for those of you that have a PC, you would uh, right click. For those of you who have a Mac, you do control click. And here, this is a window I want to spend a little bit of time on. Okay. So let's say I want to get rid of that, Sankaran syphilitic. I go down to delete. And it'll ask you, do you actually want to delete that? And I say, yes, I would. Uh, well, I don't know why, but prior to Radar Opus, you could just click and then press backspace or delete, and it would do it. And now it doesn't let you do that. Um, so what you do, again, you highlight it. I will press Control, and then a drop-down menu comes down. And I, if I want to, I don't typically change intensity for rubrics. Um, I don't use a lot of... Uh, uh, I don't use a lot of things that um, change the, uh, the weight or the intensity of the different rubrics. I just try to see, I put the rubric in. Um, it's more important to select the right rubric than to select a rubric and then change its intensity. Okay. Um, so anyway, um, let me just go back to that one more time. Let's say I want becoming warm aggravates. Okay, I click on that, control click this drop-down window happens, I can change it to an elimination rubric. Let's say the patient has this, um, actually, let me give you another example, okay? Let's go to the, the so I wanna go back to um, the repertory. I see all my tabs up here. Right now, the clipboard tab is open. I press on synthesis. And let's say that you've noticed um, that your patient has unequal pupils, okay? So we go to I, so start typing it in. You don't have to start looking for it or using the mouse. Enter, pupils, enter, and it should be unequal. And then enter. Notice there's a, a Kunzli dot there. It looks like a little red blood cell. Dr. Kunzli was known for um, placing this dot or this Kunzli note uh, on rubrics that he found were much more clinically relevant. Meaning if the patient had this symptom, he found a really strong correlation between that symptom uh, and the, the curing of the patient. So the remedy has to be in there. So I pay attention to the Kunzli notes uh, because to be quite honest, there are some rubrics in the repertory that are meaningless. They're, they're, they, uh, they, just, they, just, they don't hold weight. They don't help you to find the right remedy. Um, 
And I think it's just a reflection on the skill of uh, each of the people that have um, uh, entered remedies into these different rubrics. Okay. So, um, so let's do this. Let's do this. Let's do the lid. See the lids over here also as a Quincy note. It's a bigger rubric. So let's grab that. I'm just pressing down on my, my mouse on my pad and, and then I drop it in there. Okay. So I had a, Kunz, a, Kunz, um, a Kunzli note there. So I want to, I'm going to say this analysis that I'm doing has to have the quivering of the lids because the patient has it and it's a strong symptom and they're experiencing it all the time. And there's a Kunzli no, uh, note there. So I click on it. I control click. And then I want to change the qualification from normal to eliminative. You click on that. It turns green and there's a dot there. Now, there are 80 remedies here and down here, four symptoms with 80 remedies. If I click on it, control click and change the qualification back to normal, 80 remedies there. And as you can see, there's 196. So you are eliminating all of the remedies. Right now we have 196. When I click on the uh, eyes quivering of the lids, I change the qualification to eliminative. Now there's down to 80. So the remedy has to be in there. That's what I'm telling the computer that the remedy that I'm looking for, for this patient has to be in that particular rubric. And you also have to use some discretion when you use this as well. Okay. You have to be really, uh, the stranger, the, the more rare, the stronger the symptom is, the, the more likely I'm, I am to use uh, an elimination rubric. Okay. Uh, before I take any more questions, I just want to go back to this uh, control, go back to the drop down menu. You can combine rubrics. Okay, let's over, we'll go over that. You can move rubrics around. Not very useful, but um, you can. You can select all rubrics. The best way to select all rubrics, here I'll show you. Best way, you click on it and then you press Command A and it selects all your rubrics. Okay, if I go to a different clipboard, it's down here. I press, I, I click on uh, Stool Dark and then Command A and it selects all of the, all of the rubrics in the clipboard. So let's just say, um, uh, let's see. So I'll show you guys, I'm going to select um, indented teeth, uh, tongue indented, command, click. So now I have two rubrics I've selected and then control click. So command, if I use just command, I can select all of the rubrics, I can deselect, Okay, as long as I'm holding command down, I can select and deselect rubrics. Now I go to control, open up this window and it says combine. I wouldn't combine these two because they're too uh, dissimilar, but we do have some rubrics that are very similar to each other and you want to combine them to kind of keep your net cast wide. Okay, so I click on combine rubric and then I want to create a new rubric I click on that. And then it says, do you want to combine? And I do that and it'll combine all of the remedies and those two rubrics into one rubric. Okay. So do we, uh, I'll take questions, uh, Tim. Awesome. So could you show again where you found um, the miasmatic analysis and- Absolutely. Okay, thank mm -hmm. you. Sure. So we go to this icon up here, there's a globe and then there's, I'm not too sure what that is. It's also up here. You see, I go on maps, I click, I go down to Sankron, and you see all the different plants. Like if I know it's, uh, it's a uh, Loganaceae, uh, as an example, uh, Nux vomica, Spigelia, Curare, Ignatia, they're all in the Loganaceae family. Okay. So if you have an understanding of the different plant, um, uh, the sensation of the plants, you can use that and apply that to your analysis. And then up here in the corner is the miasm. So I click on that and then I can apply malarial miasm if I see strong indications for that or psychotic. You know, you have the three A's of the psychotic miasm where the person is apprehensive, they avoid things um, and there's an acceptance of their disease. Uh, ringworm. So those are the, and then you just click on it and see that little, those analysis bars that will apply that particular miasm to the clipboard. But again, if I do that, let's say do, do tubercular again it, it puts it lumps all of the clipboards that have rubrics in them so i don't want that i want this is where i'm doing my analysis on clipboard one and so then it it um will just apply that miasm 
to that clipboard. So you have phosphorus and just FYI, any salt that has phosphorus in it is going to be in the tubercular myosin. So your calc phos, your nat phos, your cali phos. Okay. So that's how you do that. And then <clears throat> could you show again how to combine the rubrics and then also sure. to group them again? Combine them and, and what? Uh, so after you group them or combine them, if you could then ungroup them. Oh, sure. Um, okay. Oh, this is a good example. So uncovering the feet at night, inclination uncover the feet. So I click, it turns blue, command, click. The next one I want to select. And let's just say I want to click that. They're all highlighted in blue. Now I'm going to go to control, click. Okay. And it says combine uh, uh, rubrics. So I click on that. Create a new rubric. Click on that. And then it says delete the original rubrics. I do want the original rubrics deleted because I just want one rubric. Uh, and keep all the remedies in the combination. I want that. So then I combine. Now it's combined. You'll see it, anytime you see a rubric and it says et cetera, that means that it's more than one rubric. It's, there's a combination of rubrics that have happened. Okay. So how to uncombine those? I'm actually not too sure. Well, it says ungroup rubrics. Yeah, it, I don't typically do that. If I want to ungroup them, I usually just delete it and I find the rubrics that I want and put them back in the clipboard. And I think in that particular case, because you deleted the original rubrics, mm -hmm. the, the original rubrics to create one new one, you either have to delete it um, you just have to, you, the only option there is to delete it altogether. But if you combine the rubrics and don't create them into one new rubric, but you keep them and just say, you letter them like all of the letter A's in my analysis are actually going to be treated as one rubric. Right. And then ungroup them or uncombine them um, right. later because they weren't merged into one actual line on the analysis. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's well. That's the function I don't typically use. I, I just got comfortable with using the uh, combine. Um, combine. Feature. There are a lot of there are a lot of features here that that I, I don't actually use. I've just found that you know the way uh, I've, I've I've modeled my use of the program to fit my needs essentially. So amazing, um, yeah. And and I think um, there well there was just another a couple of questions that have been out there. Okay. On, uh, so I just wanted to clarify, command, the command key in PC is control. So if there's a, a, a shortcut that's being mentioned, it's command F or command S or whatever the case might be, you can use control equivalent on PC. And can you say what the three A's were of the psych psychosis miasm? Psychotic miasm, yeah. There is acceptance of the disease, okay? It's uh, this, thing that I, this thing that I have, it's... Um, it's not going to kill me, um, but it's something that I have to just accept as it is. So you'll see that uh, in psychotic miasm cases. Uh, there is avoidance. They, they, because the psychotic miasm patients perceive a weakness within themselves, they try to avoid situations where that weakness will be exposed. So somebody that has warts, they're embarrassing. They don't want people to see them, so they'll cover them up if they can, as an example. Uh, or their asthma, like a nat sulf um, uh, patient that needs, they need nat sulf for their asthma. The asthma is perceived not as something that's threatening to them, something they can live with, but at the same time, it's embarrassing because it shows that they're weak in some way. Uh, and then apprehension is the third one. Uh, you'll see metarinum, thuya, uh, like I said, nat sulf. Um, they have a lot of apprehension about new situations and new things because they're afraid of being exposed. So those are the three A's. Thank you. Yep. Any other questions? Uh, I think for the moment in terms of what we're chatting about, I think those are the most relevant questions that we have at the moment. Okay. All right. So again, um, notice how I have the whole, the whole uh, window is taken up by my clipboard. If I, want to go, if I want access to my repertory references or patients, I double click on the tab and then it opens that back up and minimizes this. Now I want to go back to my repertory, okay? Again, synthesis, and there's my repertory. Um, so a couple other things across the top here. Um, zooming in, zooming out. If you're, 
if you're, you know, um, you're straining to see your screen, press zoom in, click on that once or twice and everything will get bigger or zoom out and everything will get smaller. Okay, pretty uh, self-evident. Then there's this little bar or tab here. You click on that and you get a couple of other ones. You get general help, screenshot. Okay, when I produce uh, PowerPoint slides for lecture, uh, I use a screenshot quite a bit. And then you, uh, if, you're, if your computer's uh, linked up, I hardly ever use this. I really don't print out stuff from my radar program. I don't use it, um, but those are there, okay? Another important thing I wanna talk about uh, are these three little icons here, okay? This is the remedies. If I click on this, you see it says pupils unequal. Well, let's, let's go this way first. Do you guys see here where it says uh, mind coma pupils unequal pupils with, okay? So if you have a patient who's in a coma and they have unequal pupils, that's the rubric you want to use. And if you double click on that, it's going to take you to that rubric. Okay. And then I can backspace and go back to unequal pupils. All right. So if I would always recommend having these links, they're very, very, very helpful. Okay. They'll take you to rubrics that you may not have considered before. So you should always have this tab on. If I click that, it hides them. And it kind of it takes away a tool. So make sure that you always have that on so that you can jump or it'll kind of like a hyperdrive. It, it jumps you to different parts of the repertory uh, and gives you some helpful hints. Okay. This one is the authors. Okay. This little gray, you see there's K. I don't know if, I don't know what your resolution is like, but that's K for Kent. Okay. BG is Boger. HR is Herring. A is Allen, usually Timothy Allen. PTK is Fatak. So I like to see the authors of the rubrics because in my mind, if Kent put it in there or Herring put it in there or Boninghousing put it in there or Fatak put it in there, it's more relevant. I feel like it's a, it's a stronger rubric because uh, I think they were better prescribers. Um, so I like to have the authors in there. If you don't want the authors in there, you click on that and as you notice, all of the authors disappear and you just have the remedies. So I like my authors in there so I can see who's who. If you want to know what the abbreviations are, you just double click. So I click on A1, double click, Timothy Allen. And it gives you a little, uh, his book, Primer Materia Medica, Pocket Characteristics, when it was uh, authored in 1894, published. Um, and if I want to close that out, just click the tab, it closes it out. I like to, if you're going to be in this program and you're really immersed in homeopathy, you should really get to know the different authors that have, the doctors that have, you know, put their, we're standing on some pretty broad shoulders. And um, it's really uh, good to, over time, get to know these doctors that have, uh, uh, you know, given their life for this art and the science and to just kind of, you know, know who they are and know, you know, what, the, what their work was about. So I like to have them in there. Um, and then this last one, I don't know why you'd have it, but it takes the remedies out of the rubrics. Okay, so if you open up your repertory and all you see uh, are rubrics like that and no remedies, um, it's because this tab is off. So you click on that and then it opens it back up for you. Okay, so um, all right, so I like to have my remedies in my rubrics. I like to have the authors so I can see who put the remedies into those rubrics. And I like to have these, these links that, uh, that help me to jump around uh, and give me um, other ways of uh, looking at different symptoms. Okay, um, we are going to spend the next webinar on a, a much more in depth on the search function, but I do, there were quite a few questions about it, so I do want to go into it a little bit, okay? So the search is up here, you see search, and if I just click on that, watch what happens. It's obviously, I click on something, it's going to open up here. So I click, I just click that, and it says type your search. But the thing is, is this is a, a simple search and I never, ever, ever use simple search. I always use advanced search, okay? And I'll talk about why. Um, if you see here, it, it's, uh, this is uh, uh, darkened, it's darkened there. That's a simple search. If it has three dots in it, advanced search mode, and that's the one I want. So I click on that and then it opens up these four different little um, areas where I can type stuff in, okay? Let me close this out again. And I'm gonna go here to the search function and there's a little triangle. So if I click on that, now I have, I can find a rubric starting from the current rubric, but here's your simple search and your advanced search. So typically when I open up the search function, I go up here, I go to this uh, triangle, I go to advanced search, 
you click on that and then there you go so a um, couple things about basic searches okay that, that I'll spend a little bit of time on um, some I don't know why but let's say I want to look in the mind chapter so I type in M I M I N D it says mind all chapters mind in all caps for some reason you have to pick the all caps okay so I click on all caps then it will go into the mind chapter okay and let's say um, uh, I want to look at um, keep ourselves and I want to look at keep ourselves anxiety so this first one will look for words for you this one looks for the remedies and this one looks in chapters if you want to look in chapters okay you can we'll spend a lot of time on this uh, next time but you can really this is the power of this program this is what you really need to get good at um, in order to find the information you need all right because that's really what this program does is the patient says something that's strange rare unique it, it's it's the core of the case and if you can find it based on what they've said or what you're observing in a matter of three five 20 seconds that's the power of this program okay so you have words that you want to search for and you can search for multiple words you have remedies you have families I never use this tab okay it's just it's just not something I use um, and then uh, the mind chapter so now I need to apply that and what I what it's going to apply is it's going to look in the mind chapter only it's going to look up heap ourself and it's going to look up anxiety and heap ourself so here we have search search in all documents so another drop down window so i click that and i want to search in all you can search in all the repertories let's do that first okay so i apply it and it's going into the mind chapter and it's looking up keep ourself for anxiety so first of all let's go over here okay and it's found under um bianchi nine entries for heap ourself under uh, Boricky, one entry for heap ourself and anxiety. Boger, seven. So these are, that's what these numbers mean. Um, and so Schroen, which is synthesis, has 37 entries. And you also see that here. It says anxiety, heap ourself in the mind chapter. 37. So then I can, I usually just kind of click over here. And this is where I use my, my, uh, my arrow keys. So I start to scroll down. I see anxiety in the evening in bed, anxiety at night. Um, I can... And then I start to this, see how the hand is moving over here. Those are the different um, rubrics. I just kind of slide down. Anxiety about his relatives. It's a grade three. Okay. So, and if I double click on it, that rubric, it takes me to the actual rubric itself. And I can see Chodroy, um, and I'm actually, I think that's Galvardine. Let's see. Galvardine, yeah. So close that out. So you can actually go to the rubric from your search function. All right. Go back to search. You have heap ourself, anxiety in the mind chapter. Okay. So that's that's one way to search. Do we have any questions, Tim? Um, at the moment, do to do, do. That's it. No other further questions. Okay. Oh, the one, the one comment um, that someone did have, Miss um, Tara, and I was just replying privately back to her, but maybe it would be helpful, is she was wondering what the different um, fonts and colors in a particular rubric. Oh, great. Good question. Yes, yeah, that, yes that's something else that... Uh, so uh, let me find a rubric. Um, and mine, Jealousy, is one that does have one. Okay, I was going to use my fear being approached, but uh, jealousy does. Okay, so when it's black and lowercase, it's a grade one. So there's four grades to uh, remedies that have been placed in rubrics. So anacardium is a grade one for jealousy. Amyl nitrosamine is a grade two. If it's blue and italics, it's a grade two. Grade three is bold and red. Well, Nux is jealous. And then the two remedies that have been placed under jealousy, that's a grade four. And grade four is almost pathognomonic. I mean, if, that, if the patient has that uh, and that remedy is a, a grade four in that particular symptom, it's usually a keynote. Okay? So lachesis is uh, bold. 
It's red and it's underlined, which is a grade four, okay? This way of grading the different remedies and the different rubrics is not as helpful with the, because you have a computer as it was when you had to thumb through a book, okay? Um, it was helpful in the past. Um, I, if, if I'm gonna use the rubric for jealousy, I'm looking at all of these remedies. I'm looking at Staphysagria, I'm looking at sulfuric acid, I'm looking at belladonna, baritasulf, glenoinum, uh, lacconinum. Okay, I'm not, um, I'm not gonna say, oh, the patient has jealousy, let me look at hyacinus and lachesis. Okay, that's the wrong way to approach um, uh, the repertory. It's good to know that hyacinus typically has jealousy and lachesis tends to have jealousy. Uh, but we really have to keep our net cast wide until we get down to those, you know, three, five, maybe 10 remedies. And then you really start to kind of um, burrow down into each remedy and try to figure out which remedy the patient needs based on those symptoms. Okay. So, um, oh, there's another really cool feature here um, that I want everybody to be aware of. These little flags up here. Okay. If I go over the blue flag, it says, well, ah, that's not what that means. So it gives you some information and some insight into the word itself. Great care must be taken in assessing this feeling of jealousy for it's very common, which detracts from its value as a symptom. Children and young couples frequently show signs of jealousy in one way or another. So they're just giving you some uh, indication as to when you're going to use the rubric, what does it actually mean? Let me give you guys another example. Um, if we go to, so again, I want to move around the repertory. So I'm not going to use my mouth or my pad or my mouse. I'm just going to type in mind. Abstraction of mind. And I go, well, what does that mean? So I press enter and there's a flag. And it says mind not present, preoccupied, spacey, distracted, mentally withdrawn or mental withdrawal. So keep an eye out for the blue flags and the black flags. Um, if you're having, if you want a, a quick way to reference what does the rubric actually mean. Go ahead. I, I, yeah, I do have a couple other questions. Um, one question, what's the difference between chili, a chill and chilliness? A chill is an actual chill um, where the person feels a chill, whereas chilliness, it tends to be more cold. Um, you also you have to be careful with that one because uh, the main symptom uh, for when a person's really cold is generals. Uh, heat, lack of vital heat, where the person cannot get warm. Okay, you see there's a little blue flag. This rubric represents cold-blooded persons. If chilliness is related to a disease process, look under the chill chapter. So the chill itself has to do with the disease process, whereas the person that can't get warm is the uh, general's heat, lack of vital heat. Okay. And again, it has to be very marked. It has to be really, really intense in order to use this. As you can see, there's 292 remedies under lack of vital heat. And actually, and you also have to be careful with this because um, I'm gonna show you guys a case uh, in a couple minutes where the remedy typically is very hot, but this person is very cold. Um, so the main thing to cut through any confusion you might be having is to really allow, develop your ability to uncover the symptom in the case, understand the uniqueness of it, if it's something you can turn into a rubric, and then find the rubric that expresses that symptom in the, in the case or in the patient identically. If you can develop that skill, a lot of your confusion or the conflicting theories that different homeopaths have, those things will kind of fall to the wayside and you can figure those out uh, over time. But really allow the symptoms and the uniqueness of the symptoms in the case to guide you. There are a lot of people that are very cold. There are a lot of people that run hot. If you can find something unique about it, that's great. You know, if you have a, a patient that, um, that uh, they tend to run really warm and they hate warm, stuffy rooms, and if they get stuck in a warm, stuffy room, they're going to faint. They're going to start typing. It's generals, faintness, room, warm, W-A-R-M. Room. <laughs> aggravates. So those are the remedies uh, that will faint in a warm room. So that's, that's not just being warm, but the warmth is aggravating them to the point where it not, doesn't just make them uncomfortable, it makes them lose consciousness. So you really have to 
pay attention to things like that. The uniqueness, uh, concomitant symptoms, how strong the modality is. Okay. And then a couple of things. One, um, one I guess, is just an announcement because I'm seeing a lot of questions on specific search functions. Okay. And just an announcement that we are planning to offer a webinar that is specifically on the search function. So okay. if you wouldn't mind holding these questions until then, and then we can really dedicate a, um, a really thorough training on the search functionality that would help us tremendously so that we can get through yep. the rest of our content today. Um, there was one question that was just generally, how do you access the search function area? Not that we need to do a search, but how do we get into just opening up that search function? Okay. All right. So let me just close out the tab. Again, I go to search up here. There's the triangle. I click on that. And I, I don't use a simple search. I use the advanced search and just click on that. And then it'll open up my window. And then I can put in words, remedies. One other little thing here quickly. So watch, I, if, if you start typing in the remedy, look at how it comes up. So if I type in OP for opium, if you notice nothing comes up. If I put a little period there, now the remedy comes up. And then, and then I have to go down and select it. And then that puts the remedy in there, okay? So some of the remedies, like uh, if I go back, uh, I believe also with Mercurius, you see it has all the mercury salts, but if I put a little period there, Mercurius solubilis. So some of the remedies, if you, put in the, if you put in the abbreviation, it doesn't come up, put a little period, and then it will probably come up. Okay. And I think, I think those are all of the relevant questions for the moment. Okay. And then again, yeah, when our, our next uh, webinar, we're going to dedicate the whole thing to the search function because that is really a very powerful way of searching all the Materia Medica, all the repertories, um, and really finding the information that will help you to, to nail the case. Okay. Um, let me take a quick look at other things I wanted to go over. Somebody wanted to know a little bit on being more efficient. Again, the main thing for efficiency um, is typing what you want and entering uh, fear of heart disease. Enter. So you're not using the mouse very much. You're just typing in the words that you want and pressing enter. Quickest way for efficiency. Oh, somebody had a question about translating modern clinical signs. That's uh, so. Uh, I'll just show you guys this quickly. So type in generals. Enter, laboratory findings, enter. It's not complete. There's probably a lot of uh, things that are missing in there, but um, that's the, the closest thing that I know, the most useful thing. If, if you're trying to look up a particular lab finding, um, that's where you'd find it, okay? Um, let's see. So let's go over uh, a case, all right? And we'll, it'll just be in a little exercise. Let's see, so this is a patient that I had um last year it's 54 year old female and i just really just i just grabbed this uh, uh out of uh, uh, the chart okay just very abbreviated just so it gives us a, a little bit of time to to look up symptoms okay so they have upper limb neurologic pain in the left arm they went in three weeks prior for some blood work they couldn't get her vein and then they tried some veins in the back of the hand the dorsum of the hand and on the third, the phlebotomist couldn't get the vein. And on the third one, she felt a really sharp pain. And from that point on, she said the whole area was angry. And she started getting these shooting pains that would shoot from the injection site up into the elbow. And then they started, as the time went on, they started progressing up into the shoulder. Okay. So we have a couple, we have some bits of information here. And the first thing is, is the nature of the injury. And the nature of the injury, where I'm going to show you, so start typing in uh, GEN for generals, and then wounds, and then start typing in penetrating and punctured. I press enter and enter. And so I'm going to grab this rubric and pull it into, say, clipboard number three. That's the nature of the wound. The, the needle went in, and it... Hit a, it, it hit some nerve tissue or caused some pain. And from that point on, she's been having problems, okay? The other thing is the type of the quality of the pain is radiating. It's also neuralgic. So 
I'm just backspacing, okay, guys? Um, just backspace to back to generals. And then we're going to type in um, pain. And then neuralgic pain. And click on that. I press enter. I'm going to grab this rubric here and pull it in. We have that. And I don't know if you guys noticed, hold on, let me go back, but there's a little flag there. Pain reading along the course of a nerve. That's neuralgic pain. Um, and then we also have pain, radiating pains. Okay. I'm going to grab that rubric. And I click on the clipboard and we've got Hypericum, we've got Plumbum, we've got Silica, we've got Apis, we've got Magfos. Okay. But there's one other symptom there's one other rubric that really, really nails the case. And it's in, so, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to back to the synthesis. I have my active window open. What I'm going to do is it's under extremities. Okay. But the problem is, let's say I'm having problems finding it. Okay. And I'm spending some time and I'm starting to get frustrated. I'm like, ah, what is the rubric? I know that there's a rubric in there. I just can't find the right the words in the right um, order. So this is where we go to the search function, uh, advanced search. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to type in the word injury and uh, upward because her pain was from an injury and it's extending up the arm. Okay. So I go to words. I want the rubric with words, with both of these words. If I go here to at least one word, it's gonna pull out all of the rubrics that have the word injury and all of the rubrics that have upward. So I want both of those words in my search and I wanna to go to extremities, E-X-T-R-E-M. And again, you have to do all caps, okay? So extremities chapter, it's gonna look for the word injury and upward. And I, again, I wanna search in all repertories. Probably gonna use synthesis. And here we have extremities, pain, injuries after shooting pain upward. That's exactly what she said. It's exactly what happened. So I double click on that and we have Hypericum and we have Kent. He was the author. He's the, the doc that put that in there. So when we put that into the clipboard, it obviously makes it clear that the remedy is Hypericum. Okay. And she was given Hypericum 30 C and within 48 hours, all of her nerve pain was gone. So that's a very simple, straightforward case on how to find the rubrics that you're looking for, um, whether you're doing it through uh, just the uh, search function or just going through the repertory itself, okay? And if you wanna read up on the remedy, oh, here's something else that's very useful. So I just, I just double clicked and it took me to the, to the rubric. Now, if I wanna read up on the remedy, I just put my mouse over it and I double click and it'll open up, usually opens up Archibald. Doesn't do it for all the remedies. There's several hundred it does it for. Um, something else to pay attention to, if you double click on a remedy and something like this comes up, see these four tabs, it means it's not on Keynote. It's on Passport or it's on Multimedia or it's on Families, but I want the Keynotes, okay? Injury to the nerve and the spine, mental emotional symptoms, injuries to parts, rich in nerves, shooting pains upward along the nerve, okay? So that, that, uh, that's something else uh, you should be aware of, that if you want to read up on Materia Medica, let's say Arsenicosum, you double click on it. It'll do it for probably the top 400 remedies, uh, but it doesn't do it for all, all right? Uh, Deep-seated insecurity, and it gives you an overview. If I want to see how many remedies I've been looking at, I go over here to, again, the triangle. I drop down, it's telling me I have Arsenicum open, Hypericum, and Lachesis open. I want to close all those. So that's going to get rid of that tab and it's going to close all of those materia medica windows. Um, yeah. When, could you show or explain the difference between when you're pulling in the search and you're looking at all documents um, versus all repertories in the search functionality? Sure. Absolutely. <clears throat> so go to search. Um, and so if I go to, so you have, I can search the current document, which is just going to go into right now, it's repertory version three Murphy. 
uh, which I don't want. All documents means it's going to go, it's going to go over here and it's going to go into all those references. And I have 889 documents and all those repertories. I have 66 repertories. And if I, I'm just going to pull this down a little bit. It's not just Materia Medica. There are therapeutics, there are journals. See, there's journals there. So when you go to all documents, it looks in everything, everything you have in your computer with, re, with re, uh, regard to that word or that remedy um, is gonna come up, okay? So as an example, so I'm just pressing the X to close those out. And close that out. And uh, let's just look at the remedy Corallium rubrum, which is red coral. And I want to see everything I, I have about that. I press all documents and let me just move this up. Oops. Move this over a little bit. So as you can see, under repertories for Corallium rubrum, red coral, uh, Bianchi has 34 entries, Boraki has 56. It's a big cough remedy, by the way. Uh, De Groot in his dreams has 313. So these are the, just the entries. How many how many hits the Corallium rubrum has for each one of these. Concepts, families of remedies, Materia Medica, you have Allen, Blackwood, if I want to click on Boraki. So I, it's, I, I, I like William Boraki. I like Oscar Boraki. So I double click on Boraki and he says Corallium rubrum, red coral. He talks about the proving and then he goes through the, some of the symptoms. And I can just kind of scroll down there if I need. Go ahead. And then um, the next question is, if you wanted to read up on glaucoma, for instance, how would you be able to do that in the search functionality? Ooh, okay. So, uh, you know, we'll just type it in. You type in glaucoma, and then you would go to um, all references. <clears throat> and there should be some materia medic in there. On, so, so you have Archibald. Um, the uh, therapeutics, Farrington, comparative materia medica. So that's how you can look up different things. That's actually an interesting one because um, there are, so here's one other thing. Murphy, um, if you ever see MP, that's uh, Robin Murphy, um, he, he kind of got a little bit of heat because as you can see, uh, food, eating, overeating aggravates he has antimonium crudum, antimonium tartaricum, he has all these remedies, and he puts himself as the author for all of these. And the problem with that is that he didn't author all of those. If you go into the Materia Medica, you're gonna see that those actually belong to Herring and, and Kent and Allen and all these other people. Um, but he just, got, when, he, when he published his, uh, his repertory, he put himself as the author for all of these entries, which he got some heat for. The good thing about his repertory, however, is if we go, to, remember that if you go to the binoculars, it's gonna give you, in Materia Medica, it's gonna give you a list of remedies, and then in the repertories, it, it gives you the chapters. If you go to clinical here, and let's say you type in, um, you have glossitis, it'll give you clinical medical terms under clinical here in, uh, in um, uh, Murphy's repertory. So that's what, because there are a lot of, um, modern clinical terms that you're not going to find in the older materia medica they're going to they're going to lump it uh under they're going to put the individual symptoms that they prescribed on not the disease itself okay and then here's a qu another question on the advanced search function and this is from yeah. susan susan we're answering your question right now on the advanced search function sometimes i will type in the chapter title like mind or extremities Mm. the word or words directly into the left hand window like under the words window where your arrow your cursor is right now uh -huh. then the remedy in the remedy pane so just the field to the right of the words field um it seems to work the same way although i will get rubrics from other chapters that have the same words in it am mm. i losing any possible rubrics by doing that um, yeah, the more, the more, um, specific search, uh, uh, information you put into the, the, uh, search function, the narrower the search is going to be. So if you just want to find a remedy, um, let's say, uh, cannabis sativa and asthma, 
right? And I put that in, it's gonna go through all of the Materia Medica and look up, pull out that remedy with that particular word. If I put, uh, if, let's say I just put in chest or put in respiration, I might actually miss some rubrics that might be under mind. You know, the, the, it, that remedy might be under anxiety from asthmatic respiration. Um, so yeah, you have to kind of think about how um, the, the, the information you're putting in, the word you're putting in, the remedy you're putting in, if that's what you want, and then definitely the chapter you could be uh, missing out. Thank you for that. And, sure. <clears throat> and then there was another question, which if you don't know the answer to this, I can guide you through it so that people can see. Um, okay. But the question, Maria, we're answering your question right now. My previous radar allowed me to organize the remedies in a rubric in order of the colors or intensities. Mm. Can you do that with radar opus? You might have to take that one. Oh, you can help okay. me. I, I, I don't do that, but yeah. Yeah, yeah, no problem. Um, well, if you just wouldn't mind just pulling up any rubric in any book. Okay. So um, let's just go to mind. Um, da, 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 da. Anguish. And we'll just click on that. Perfect. Okay. And then, um, so now what you'll do is in the top right-ish window, there's like a little wheels, which is typically the settings icon. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. Perfect. If you can give that one single left click mm -hmm. and then if you can give one single left click onto remedies and authors. Okay. And then it will say sort remedies by. And so right now it's filtering it by ascending abbreviation, I but see. if you give, but now you can change that Maria and everyone else, you can change that to filter based on degree. So by ascending or descending degree. Uh, so now, you're gonna see the plus four intensity remedies first, then plus three, then plus two, then plus one. Learn something new every day. Hey, you know, <laughs> thank you for Maria <laughs> for bringing that up. Yeah, thank you. That's interesting. <laughs> so like many, that. the bells and whistles of this program, I mean, it's like incredible. Mm -hmm. um, and then I just wanna answer Gail's question because I'm not a, P, a, a Mac person. And I know you already showed this, Matt, and I think you already showed us twice, or this will be the third time. I'm so sorry. No problem. no problem. But if you could go back to deleting a rubric in okay. a clipboard, is it po is it? I'm sorry, I missed this. Is it on a Mac, on a PC, I can do it with my keyboard. Is it possible to do that with a Mac? And if so, what's the key combination? Yeah, so um, in my old radar program, I would just highlight and press delete or backspace and that would get rid of it, and it doesn't do it in this program. So what I do is control, once I highlight a rubric I don't want, I control, click, and then down at the bottom it'll say delete. And I hit delete, and then it'll, it says, do you wanna get rid of that? And I say yes, and then it gets rid of it. Okay, so even, so your delete key doesn't work on, on this? Mm-mm. Okay, I'll let the, I'll, yeah, I'll let I'm doing know. it right now, and it doesn't do anything. It's not doing a thing, well darn it, okay. Um, well that's good, and um, could you show us again how to increase the number of available clipboards? Sure, yeah. So we go to a clipboard, again, uh, for Mac, it's control click, uh, and then it's down at the bottom of that window that opens up, it's more clipboards or fewer clipboards. So I can do fewer, and then I'll take, it always takes away the bottom one. Even if you have rubrics in there, but the, the neat thing is watch, this one has five in it. I'm going to control click, and I'm gonna go fewer clipboards, it gets rid of it. But if I go here and click control and more clipboards, I didn't lose the rubrics. It just got rid of the clipboard. Very cool. Okay. Um, let's see. I did have one more uh, case uh, to give you guys a little bit of um, exercise in, in navigating and finding uh, symptoms. So are there any questions before we do that? Um, yeah, let me uh, do, 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 do. Okay. Um, can you show how to group remedies one more time? Sure. Order yep. So oh, I actually, I think I'm sorry, Sandy. I'm Sandy. We're answering a question now. Let me know if I'm getting the right thing. I think actually she wants to know um, going back to changing the settings in the repertory to filter how the rubrics are displaying. Uh, we changed it to do it based on Degree, how do you change that to go between degree or abbreviation alphabetically, et cetera? Oh, is it back to this wheel? Yes, exactly. Okay, and then remedies and authors, and then I can sort by 
ascending abbreviation. Is that what they wanted to know? That's what they wanted to know. Perfect. Yeah. Okay. So it's and the wheel. The wheel over here. Remedies. The wheel of fortune. <laughs> <laughs> um, and Sandy, message if if I didn't quite answer that. Um, and then I am getting a bunch of several questions on. Can you add a remedy to a rubric? And I will answer that in saying, currently in Raider Opus, you cannot do that. With the, the most, uh, the, with the next version release that we will have with 2.0, you mm -hmm. will be able to add existing remedies to existing rubrics. Okay. So that feature will be here in the next couple of weeks. Oh, good. Um, so stay tuned. But no, for those of you who are asking, that's something that you cannot uh, do that at the moment. Mm -hmm. Oh, and thank you, Lisi. Um, on a Mac, actually, Matt, if you wouldn't mind experimenting with this, if you go sure. into a clipboard, she uh -huh. said that if you do command delete, at okay. the command and delete at the same time on a rubric, it should delete it. Whoa. It opened up. Uh, or it opens up Sankram Myisms. Who knows? <laughs> <laughs> Let's see. Command delete. Nope, it's not well, my well, even more interesting. Well, I'm glad it's working for you, Lissy. How about control delete? Or maybe control delete. I, I'm not sure. Nope, I didn't do it. That didn't do it either. Okay. Well, well, um, <coughs> okay, great. We got Sandy's. That's for sure. Thanks for playing this side. I'm glad you think so, Gail. Okay, perfect. Raider Opus 2.0 is not uh, fully launched yet, but it will be out in the next couple of weeks. And for everyone who's interested, it's a totally, if you own Raider Opus, it's a totally free upgrade. And I will send you an email on the newsletter list with step-by-step -step instructions of how to update your program to 2.0. So stay tuned on that, Subir, and everyone else who's asking, I, I will keep you posted on that. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, so let's do, uh, I think we got about mm, 11 minutes. All right, so let's do one more, this is a very quick little case. It's the one I had last year. 26 year old female, sore throat. She woke with a sore throat. Pain started on the left and now is on the right. The pain is sore and it's worse on empty swallowing. And she says, I'm so cold. I've been under blankets and even electric blanket all day and I can't get warm. I still can't get warm. Uh, since I've had my fever, I've had a heaviness in my chest. Um, I ended up giving her a remedy in 12C. She took five doses over five hours of a 12C and her fever and all of her symptoms were gone uh, within five or six hours. So um, let's look at this. What's unique about this is the pain starts on the left and now it's on the right. Okay. And so we can find that under so I'm just clicking the tabs. I want to get back to the repertory. I want to get back to the repertory so I can do be active and do my active work. Okay. So now I want to go to generals, sides, left, and then the right. So I'm going to grab that rubric, put it in the clipboard. The other thing she says, the pain is worse on swallowing, an empty swallowing. So um, something else you want to be aware of, Th this throat chapter here, that has to do with the internal throat. I press this green arrow and it takes me back. External throat has to do with goiter. It has to do with pulsing carotids. It has to do with the, um, the lymph nodes in the neck. It has to do with um, uh, torticollis, okay? So the internal throat has to do with what you see or what the patient experiences inside the throat versus external throat. So for this, it's throat, pain, swallowing, empty. Aggregates, enter, enter, okay? So I'm just gonna pull that rubric into the clipboard. Um, what was the other thing the patient said? So we got the left to right, we got the sore pain, uh, and then she's cold, she can't get warm. Oh, and the heaviness in the chest. And the heaviness, and she had a fever. So that rubric, so again, I'm in my synthesis uh, window. I'm gonna type in, chest. If I type in heaviness, this is another good uh, uh, function of the program. If I type in heaviness, look at it, there's nothing there. I click on it and it says oppression. That's the word you have to use. Anytime somebody says they feel heaviness, it's oppression. If they feel tightness, it's constriction. Okay. So I double click. So, so if I had this closed, this little tag over here, 
it wouldn't it would just say heaviness and it wouldn't get me to oppression that's why you want this open or that that function on there's my oppression so i double click on that okay and now what i like to do uh so she's had she doesn't normally have i just double clicked on oppression she doesn't normally have heaviness of the chest this is during her fever so if i type in fever during enter aggravates 55 remedies have that okay so i grab that pull that into the clipboard and then the last symptom that she had was um she had uh she couldn't get warm she's very very chilly so we go with chill warm desire for warmth which does not relieve okay and i pull that over there and we look in the clipboard and there's lachesis that was she got that's what she got lachesis 12c and one of the interesting things about this is that we do know that a keynote for lachesis is it starts on the left and then moves to the right or it can just stay on the left they do have a lot of pain on empty swallowing but they tend to be very warm and in this case we don't i'm just all i'm doing is double clicking to take me to the rubric you see kent has lachesis under chill desire for warmth which does not relieve which means they're extremely cold and we tend not to think of Lachesis patients as cold. They tend to be really warm and they're worse from heat, which is true in most of the cases. But in this case, because I followed the patient's symptoms, I was able to get to the right remedy. Okay, so uh, really try to question any overarching view of a remedy um, as far as, uh, you know, I, with my uh, students sometimes I'll say, well, you know, they say nature muriaticums don't cry. You know, they tend to be very reserved and keep everything inside. And if we go to the search function, advanced search, I'm going to type in NAT-M. I'm going to select NatMir. And the word for crying is weeping. And I press enter. And then I'm going to search all repertories. This will be the last little thing here because I know we're starting to get towards the end. Uh, all repertories. And then under Schroyens, let me just double, I'm double clicking the tab to open up, open it up to the whole page. We have for Nat Mirror weeping, it's a grade three, weeping in the evening, weeping at night in sleep, weeping from admonition, weeping when alone, weeping after anger. Cannot weep though sad, that's a keynote for Nat Mirror, but we also have weeping consolation aggravates, involuntary, easily. And you say, well, who put that in there? Double click on it, you have Nat Mirror, Nur, and, uh, this other homeopath as well. So um, it's just a really good way to understand. I study the Materia Medica with those searches. Like I'll say, hmm, I wanna know some keynotes for sepia. So, and we'll get into that next time because there's this whole thing you can do. You see how this circle is blue? You can click on that and then we're gonna, we'll get into all this stuff here, which can be very useful in studying your uh, Materia Medica in your case. So I think we have five minutes left. Uh, maybe another question or two and kind of wrap it up. Perfect. Yeah. Um, first question, uh, or actually, can, <laughs> shall we take a stab at it, Mac users, one more time? Um, going into the clipboard, apparently, there, Lissy's saying there are two delete different keys on the Mac keyboard, and it's the one that's on the farther right-hand side of the keyboard. Okay. So if, you do, if you click on a, give a single click on a rubric and then command delete key on the far right hand side okay nope not for me <laughs> not for you okay well hopefully that may work for someone else i have an older mac maybe it does work on the newer <laughs> mac <laughs> and <clears throat> another question lorne and i know a couple other people might be wondering the same thing we are uh -huh. going to be making this avail webinar available as a recording after the fact i'll yep. send an email out on the listserv so just stay tuned um, and then a couple of people were asking Matt about potency. Why did you choose 12 C for that particular case and it being an acute and is there a general guideline that you have for potency in general? Like when do you choose a 12 C or a 6 C or a 30 C, et cetera? That's a, that's a long discussion. I know uh, we like to have the big ones in general for acutes. I tend to do 12 or 30 C. Um, I came across a case uh, in the Materia Medica of, a, of a, a young man who stepped on a rusty nail and uh, started having, uh, wasn't sleeping right. This is, this is a case that's actually in radar. Um, wasn't sleeping well, 
started to develop cramping and neuralgic pains up his legs and his jaw started to clench. He essentially developed tetanus over a period of 24 hours. And the doctor gave him two doses of Hypericum 2C and that was it. That's all he needed. That's so, amazing. yeah. So they, 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 as many practitioners as we have out there, it's, that's how many theories there are in uh, posology. Um, but I can share some of that uh, next time or maybe on a different webinar. But typically, uh, high, po um, high potencies I reserve uh, more for depending on the patient's vitality, uh, if the dreams are involved, if there's energy in the case where they're using hand gestures. Uh, those are all indications. Um, so it's, it's a really, really complex question. I have a, I, I I'd have a lot to say about it, but I don't know if we have the time right now. Yeah, no, fair enough. And are there, how can we delete the rubric description at the same time, keep the description? Um, uh, maybe Matt, do you understand this question? How can we delete the rubric description and at the same time, keep the description at the search windows? Uh, I'm not following the, the rubric description. I'm not following that. Antoine, can you clarify further? Is he talking about this little window that opens up? I'm not sure, and I don't know that a message is coming through. So we will hold that one. Clarify. Let us know what, what you mean by that question, and we will be happy to answer that later. Yeah, absolutely. And I don't think that we have any other questions popping in so i guess we're calling it our first official webinar all right um, thank you guys so yeah, much thank for you so much participating in here and um matt thank you so much for your expertise for your time sure. for your willingness to share you know your your radar opus and homeopathy knowledge with us it's something You're that, very welcome. that we need it's such a useful tool and uh, it can really help to change your uh, prescribing and ability to find proper rubrics and proper remedies um, uh, when you develop the skill. So that's why I'm, I'm that's why I'm doing this because I re we really need to step it up as far as homeopathy goes, you know, globally. And so if I, any, any information that I've developed or skill that I've developed over the years, I'm happy to share. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. And that brings thank us you to, you know, we're, we're Matt and I have already been planning and we have our next webinar uh, set. I'm going to send out an email. So if you want to save the date, it's going to be on December 10th. I think we said it was at 11.30 a.m. Uh, Pacific time, 2.30 p.m. Eastern time. And it's going to be specifically on the search functionality in Raider Opus. And again, if you're not able to make it, we're going to record it and we'll post it on the site. So don't worry. And as, as with today's, um, and collect any questions that you might have because, um, uh, what you send to us as you register, we'll do the same thing as you register. If you have a question or a feature that you're really looking to have addressed, I'm going to collect them. I'm going to send them to Matt. And then we're going to try to get as many as we possibly can in during that webinar, um, as well as do the live Q and a, like we've been doing today. Mm -hmm. So, so thank you guys for your patience as we do our first uh, trial one.